Okay, no intro, straight into it. I'm on the 5.2 preview for this video because it's more accessible. If you have the GitHub version, I think some of the nodes may look different, but the basic method should work the same way. Let's make a new project. Go to Edit, Plugins, search for Procedural, and enable Procedural Content Generation Framework. Also search for Geometry, and enable geometry script. You may not need this one in the GitHub version. Restart the engine. In the Epic Games launcher, go to the marketplace and search for Agora. This is the asset pack that I'm using for this tutorial, but this method should work with any static meshes, so it doesn't really matter what you use. You may need to download these to an older project and then migrate them to the latest engine version. Back in the editor, let's go to Quixel Bridge and let's search for English Ivy. So these are the vines that I'll be using for this tutorial. And the single pack has multiple shapes of vines. So download and add to your project. And while you're here, also download any other foliage that you want to use in your label. Okay, first up, we're going to turn everything into Nanite. In the content browser, I'm going to go to the folder that's containing all my building blocks. I'm going to select all my static meshes that I'll be using and right click, go to asset actions and click on bulk edit via property matrix. And on the right hand side under display, go to nanite settings, click on enabled. You can see mine was really enabled. Save all and exit. And let's do the same for our foliage. Go to mega scans, go to 3D plants. Turn on the static mesh filter and select all the foliage that you're going to use and right click asset actions bulk edit via property matrix and same story under display go to nanite settings the only thing different is we're going to click on nanite as well as preserve area for foliage when it's done computing save all and exit so the first method that we're going to try is to spawn a mesh and on that mesh we're going to sample some points and on those points we're going to spawn vines so it looks like the vines are growing on the mesh and hanging down. So in the content browser I'm going to right click make a new folder called PCG and in that folder, right click and go to PCG and make a new PCG graph. I'll name this PCG underscore mesh finds. Double click to open the PCG graph. So in the PCG graph, right click and search for actor. And let's get a new node called get actor data. Let's just save and go back to our viewport for a second but still have our PCG graph visible. We can have the view of the viewport and the graph at the same time. Let's drag the PCG graph into the label. It automatically spawns a PCG volume that's using the graph as the instance. Okay, so let's go back to our get actor data node and right click. You can see there is a debug option and an inspect option. Let's click on debug and move a little further back in the viewport. The white cube that you see here is a PCG debug visualization of this node. Uh, you can press the hotkey D to enable and disable debug. When debug is enabled, the node has a blue circle on it. In the node options under debug, go to the scale method and change to absolute and change the point scale to 0.1. Now you can see all the points that is being spawned by this PCG volume. And in the settings, you can change the mode to get a single point only. And you can see only a single point spawns in the middle of the volume. In the graph, right click on the node and press inspect. Go to the drop down menu up here and select the PCG mesh vines. And in the window down here, 
it tells you how many points this volume is currently spawning at this particular node in the graph. So for this first method, we're going to change this to get single point because we're going to only spawn one mesh to begin with. Let's right click and search for spawn and get a new node called static mesh spawner and connect the nodes. Now we need to select the mesh to spawn. Select the static mesh spawner node and in the details, go to mesh entries. Click on the little plus sign in a circle to add a new slot for a mesh and choose any mesh that you want to use to spawn vines on. I'm going to use this building block. Put the static mesh into the slot and you can see our static mesh is huge because the volume itself is really big. In the node graph, uh, let's right click here and search for transform and get a new node called transform points and put it in the middle of the two nodes and you can alt click to disconnect nodes. So select the transform points node. I'm going to enable debug on this node and it'll be a good idea to disable debug on the other node. So in transform points, if I click absolute scale, the scale becomes set to a particular value, no matter the size of the volume. So whether you make the volume big or small, the scale will remain the same and it'll only be tied to this transform points node, but that is not what I want. So I'll disable absolute scale and the smarter thing to do would be changing the scale value of the volume back to 111. This way, if I scale the volume in the editor, the size of the mesh will change with it. So I can edit the scale of the mesh more easily. Let's turn off the debug on this node. We're going to get a new node called mesh two points. So this node will look different in the GitHub version, but it'll work the same way. Select the static mesh spawner node and browse to the mesh that you're spawning. So have this selected in your content browser. Now go back to the mesh to points node and insert the selected mesh in this node. So in order for this to work, so you need to use the same mesh in the two nodes. Press D to enable debug on mesh to points node. And you can see some points that are spawning at world origin in the shape of the static mesh that you've inserted. We're going to get a, another node called copy points and we're going to plug the mesh to points as a source and static mesh spawner as the target. So we're going to get the points from the mesh to points node and then target that in, onto the mesh that is being spawned in the volume. Now you can see the points are mapped exactly to the static mesh that is being spawned in the volume. Let's get another node called density noise, which helps you randomize density values in each point. You can see in the debug, some of the white points have been turned to different shades of gray, which represent lower density values. But obviously black points are the lowest and the white points have the highest density value. Now let's get a new node called normal to density. This node uses the normal data from the static mesh to remap the density in these points. You can try changing the values in different nodes to see how it affects the outcome at the end of the node graph. It looks like normal to density node is completely overriding density noise. So let's just get rid of that one. And in the normal to density node, you can try changing the offset and the strength to change how the density is mapped on the mesh. So each white point that you see is going to end up spawning a vine. So have that in mind while you're playing around with these values and make sure you're not spawning too many points or they're too clumped together in particular spots. 
So I'm fairly happy with how it's looking at the moment. Spawning 796 points. I'm going to get a new node called density filter and connect that. And this node will filter out any points below the threshold that you set. So select the density filter node. Play around with the lower bound and upper bound values to select the range that you want to filter out. You can see in the inspection window, the number of points that you end up with updates as you change the values. I'm going to add a density nodes node before density filter. You can see the points have become more random and they're spawning more across the mesh. They are less clumped together than before. And I'm going to change the density filter values again to control the number of points that I'm ending up with. Let's add another static mesh spawner node. And let's add a vine to the static mesh spawner. So in the content browser, I'm going to go to Mega Scans and 3D Plants and English IV and select anything that you want to use, really. I'm going to choose one of the longer ones to begin with and slot that into the static mesh spawner and connect the node. Yay! We now have a sea urchin and it's done. No, I'm just kidding. So in order to control the rotation of the vines, let's add transform points node in between density filter and static mesh spawner. Firstly, I'm going to change the scale minimum values and maximum values to randomize the scale of the vines in between these two values. You can always come back and change these values. Now go to rotation and click on absolute rotation. Now the vines will be rotated in a, to a set value instead of the rotation of each point. So in the Y value, I'm going to input minus 180 and rotation maximum also minus 180. Now the vines are hanging downwards. Let's just say rotation minimum minus minus 185 and rotation maximum minus 175 so it's not hanging down as perfectly as it was before and it's slightly more randomized. And for the Z axis, let's change the rotation maximum value to 360 so it's completely randomized. And let's give minus 5 degrees to the minimum and 5 degrees to the maximum for the X axis as well. So click on the static mesh spawner node and press I to see how many points it's spawning. And you can go back to the density filter to change the values to spawn less vines or you can go the other way to spawn more. So in the viewport, uh, when I try to scale up this mesh, it defaults back to the original scale, even though I scaled up the volume. So it looks like absolute scale is still turned on somewhere for some reason. So let's go back to the PCG graph. And this transform points node, you can turn off the absolute scale in this node. Make sure you save and exit. And now you can see, you can change the scale of the volume and the scale of the mesh will update with it. So the cool thing about this method is even when you rotate the mesh, the vines will be always hanging downwards because of the absolute rotation. You can see how this will help you work faster instead of having to do this manually by hand. 
in the final static mesh spawner node, you can add another element to the mesh entry array to spawn them together on the same node, sharing the same set of points. So they won't spawn on top of each other. They'll divide the spawning points among themselves, but they'll share the same transform information from the transform points node. So in the mesh entries options, you can control the weight, which lets you control which mesh spawns more over the other one. However, I think there is a better way to do this. So I'm going to control Z to undo. I'm just going to have this node spawn just one kind of vine. And instead, I'm going to take these four nodes and select them all and control D to duplicate. And spawn another kind of vine on these set of nodes. So in this second static mesh spawner, I'm going to choose a different kind of vine and insert it into the mesh entry. Let's just um, press D on the second transform points and actually connect so I can see. So in this second density noise, you can change the seed value to completely change the location of the points that you end up with for this second static mesh spawner. I'll also change the density filter value to spawn a little less. And if you connect the final node, you can see now there are two different kinds of vines spawning on this mesh. And because we have a different kind of vine in the second static mesh spawner, I'm just gonna change the values in the transform points for this one to make it a little bit bigger. And let's repeat the process just one more time and duplicate the four nodes like so. And in the static mesh spawner, I'm going to swap the mesh for yet another different kind of vine. Click on transform points node and press D to debug and preview the points. I'm going to change the seed and the density noise again to change the location of the points and filter out more points. Click on transform points and press I for info and fine tune the number of points that you want to spawn. Let's connect the final node to see the third kind of vine spawning. And because of how this third one is shaped, the direction of the vines seem a little bit unnatural. So let's go to our transform points and try adjusting the rotation settings. Find an angle that you like and make sure to leave some difference between the rotation minimum and rotation maximum so that there is some kind of randomization of the angles and they're not all facing the same way. Okay, I'm gonna go to my PCG folder and press Ctrl D to duplicate this graph and we'll name it Vines Rect02. Double click this new graph to open it. And in this new graph, we're going to swap out the mesh that is in this first static mesh spawner. So just use a different rectangular one. And also take this same mesh and slot it into the mesh to points node as well. Making sure the two nodes have the same static mesh. Save and let's come back to the viewport. And let's drag the vines rect02 to the level and change the scale to default. You can see this new volume is doing something weird with its spawning. I think this is because it's just not updating properly, but it'll resolve itself once we just start working in the node graph. So double click to open the node graph and I'm going to disconnect the second and third static mesh spawner so we can preview the first one more easily. So here I didn't do too much except uh, change some of the rotation values, scale values, and the seed and the density noise and the amount of filtering that is done on the points. 
so that this mesh looks a little bit different from the first one that we made. So you can see how you can duplicate a PCG graph and just swap out the static mesh to achieve a similar effect on a different static mesh. Oh, by the way, another way to fix something that is not updating correctly is to select the PCG volume, go to the details panel, select the PCG component, click clean up and then generate and it should fix anything that's not working properly. Okay, let's duplicate the graph. Let's just do one more mesh, a completely different shape mesh. And we'll name this PCG finds center 01. Double click to open the graph. And I'm going to select this mesh, this alter centerpiece, and then put it slotted into my static mesh spawner and my mesh two points node. So and then I'm going to disconnect all the vines for now. And in my viewport, I'm going to drag my vines center PCG volume and change the scale back to default. So same exact process. I'm going to debug first and see where the points are spawning and how many points it's spawning. The reason I'm not spawning the vines straight away is because the base mesh that we're using now is quite a bit bigger, which means it'll be spawning way more points than before. And I want to filter some of those points out before spawning the vines and putting a lot of stress on my computer. So I'm going to preview the points in each branch and adjust the density filter values to achieve a kind of number of points that I find reasonable for this mesh. Now I'm going to connect the first branch to the first type of vine and in the transform points I'm going to tweak the scale minimum and scale maximum values because I think the vines could be a little bit bigger on this mesh compared to the other ones. I'm going to connect the second one and look at the other side. I think it's looking good and connect the third one as well and save and exit. So if you rotate, you can see the vines are updating as well. So before I go too much further into level building, I want to show you a similar method. I tried to do something similar with a blueprint, but kind of failed. So I'll show you what it is and maybe you guys can tell me what's a better way to go about this. So I'm going to go to my PCG folder, right click and create a new blueprint actor and I'll name it BP Fine Mesh Actor. Double click the blueprint to open it. And in the components, let's press add and search for static and add static mesh as a component. Compile and save and select the static mesh component and I'm going to insert another building block into the static mesh component. So it can be anything you want really. But uh, I recommend using something with a flat surface on top of it to begin with. You'll see why in a minute. So back in my PCG folder, I'm going to create another PCG graph. So PCG, PCG graph. And I'll name this PCG finds find for BP mesh. And in the blueprint, click add on the components and search for PCG and add a PCG component. And select the PCG component. And in the details panel in the instance, I'm going to add the PCG find for BP mesh. And let's drag the BP actor into the label. So let's go into PCG find for BP mesh and let's try to make this work for this blueprint. So right click, search git and let's get git actor data node. And I'm going to press D for debug and select the current instance. So you can see the points spawning on the actor, which doesn't look like many at the moment. And I'm going to right click 
and get a surface sampler node and debug this node and I can't see any points so I'll make the actor a little bit bigger so I'm going to change the point extents value to 111 to try and spawn more points and also change the points per square meter value to 1 I'm going to change the debug point scale to 0 0.1 and actually just let's just make the points per square meter 100 and point extents 111 so it looks like the points are clumped together a little bit too much so let's try increasing the point extent so about 10 10 10 they look like they're a bit more spaced out and not overlapping each other so from here i'm going to add a density noise node and debug this and change the scale method and add a density filter as well so I can reduce the points that are being spawned and I'm going to add another density noise and I'm going to right click and search for transform points and I'll add a static mesh spawner and from here the method is very similar to before so I'm going to add a vine in this node. Adjust the rotation and scale so it looks like they are flush with the surface. You can also play around with the offset minimum and maximum value on the z-axis if they look like they're digging too deep into the mesh or floating too far on top of the mesh. And adjust the scale values as well as before. And also remember to randomize the rotation values. So same story as before. I'm going to take these five nodes and duplicate. And swap out the vine for a different one. And play around with the values in the new nodes. So they are spawning differently from the first one. For this third branch, instead of adding vines, I added small foliage because I wanted to use this actor on the ground. So same method, but uh, different values to adjust for the different shapes. I duplicated this to add another kind of foliage, this time slightly bigger. So save and close the window. And now you have a blueprint that is spawning vines and foliage on top of it. So even if you change the scale in the viewport like this, it'll work. And the foliage location will randomize each time you move or change the location of the blueprint. So I'm going to select this round mesh and press Ctrl B to select it in the content browser. You can select the blueprint that is in the viewport. Go to the static mesh component and easily swap out the static mesh and it'll update straight away. So that's the good thing about having this in a blueprint. But, and this is a big but, if you rotate this, uh, the sampling no longer works properly and yeah, it doesn't work. So I think there's some kind of issue with the way I'm sampling the points on the mesh initially in the blueprint. And maybe the surface sampler node was only meant to be used for landscapes, not static meshes. So if you know how to make this work, please let me know. It would be much, much appreciated. I would love to use it in a blueprint so I can swap out the uh, meshes in the viewport without having to duplicate the PCG graph every time. Okay, 
I'm sorry, I didn't say anything in the intro, I gotta say something in the middle. Yes, I'm joining the procedural bandwagon. Unreal Engine 5.2 and the procedural content generation plugin, PCG for short, is all the rage right now. A heap ton of people are making tutorials about this on YouTube. A lot of the tutorial videos I've seen are spawning wild stuff on landscapes and simulating large scale forests. Now this is great, but I wanted to do something very very slightly different. I wanted to do something where I still have some manual control. Call me old fashioned, but I still like to be hands on with my stuff. Well, kinda. So I thought spawning vines on meshes would be a good idea to try out. Normally when I'm building a level, I would need to wait for the bigger meshes to be in place and sort of finalized before I start placing foliage. But with PCG, I think I can be more flexible with the workflow and preview the final look earlier in the process. So there was the mesh spawn method, which you've just seen. And here comes the second method. Okay, I wanted to say this so much, I need to get this out of my system. Fines on splines. Okay, one more time. Fines on splines. Okay, in the PCG folder, right click and let's make a new blueprint class. Choose actor and let's name this BP fine spline. Click on add and search for spline. So add a new spline component. In the component panel, select BP bind spline self. And in the details panel, search for tag. And under advanced, and we're going to add a new actor tag called fine spline. Select the text and control C to copy the text. Let's add another component called PCG. Add a new PCG component. And compile and save. And in the PCG folder, right click and go to PCG and let's make a new PCG graph. And we'll name this PCG underscore fine spline and then go back to our blueprint select the pcg component and in the details panel let's put the new graph into the instance of this component compile and save and let's drag the new vine spline vp onto this wall and i'll angle it 90 degrees so that the spline starts flat on the wall so select the spline point and alt left click and drag to copy the points and make the spline into the shape that you want. So this way we can visualize what's going on when we make the PCG graph. Double click and open the vine spline PCG graph and we will right click and search for spline and get spline data. In the details panel, change this actor filter to all world actors and we'll select it by tag and in the selection tag, paste by pressing Ctrl V, which was what we copied before. Make sure to check the select multiple option as well. Tags are case sensitive, so be aware. In the node graph, right click and search for spline again. And let's get spline sampler this time and connect it to get spline data and press D to debug and select the current instance and press I for inspection data. Now, if you look carefully on the spline, there are white bars or segments that are showing and the inspection data is telling us it's only spawning 10 points along the spline at the moment. So let's try changing the subdivision per segment value. So if we increase the division, you can see the number of points increase. 
the white debug bars they they get shorter and more divided along the spline so this means it will spawn more points along the spline in the node graph we'll right click and search for noise and we'll get a new density noise node and if you zoom in and look along the spline some of the bars have now been turned to different shades of gray so we'll right click and search for filter and we'll get density filter and change the debug to density filter and you can see some of the bars have now been filtered out it's slightly too sparse for my liking so let's increase the subdivision per segment value to 10. in the density filter node let's change the debug scale method to absolute and point scale percentage to 0.1 now we can see the colors a bit more clearly i'm going to right click and search for noise again and we'll get another density noise and connect that so we'll randomize this further and change this to absolute and point scale 0.1 i wish they just made this default and let's add a transform points node and add a static mesh spawner node in the static mesh spawner node let's add a new mesh entry and select one of the vine meshes to spawn i'll use this one to begin with you can see the vines are spawning in a weird way so as before we will need to control the rotation and i'm just gonna get a third person character near this wall so i get a sense of scale and let's adjust the scale minimum value and scale maximum value so 1.5 for minimum maximum maybe 2.2 you can use whatever values that you prefer at the moment some of these vines are too clumped together even though we want some overlap uh, so i'll add another density filter between these two nodes and then adjust the value now we can filter out more points so now let's try adjusting the rotation so the vine sits flat to the wall so 90 and 90 on the x-axis and 180 and 180 on the y-axis and for the z-axis i'm gonna go minus 90 and minus 90 so it faces the other way will give some difference to the values so that the angles are a bit more random now so minus 110 and minus 75 for the z axis you can see the vines are angled slightly differently and also we can give very slight variation to the x and y axis as well so that they're not all sitting perfectly flat now they look more random and less repetitive along the spline and you guessed it i'm going to duplicate all these nodes to spawn another kind of vine along the spline so i'm going to disconnect the final static mesh spawner node just for now let's connect the branch first select transform points press d for debug select density noise and change the seed value and also in the density filter i'm going to change the value slightly but for some reason the points aren't being the points are spawning in the similar areas and being clumped together with the first branch so let's du also duplicate the spline sampler this way this second branch can have different number of subdivisions per segment so I'll change this number to 12 and let's try tweaking the values in the other nodes in the branch so I want to randomize this a bit more to sort of fill in the gaps and not clump together too much with the other branch and in the second static mesh spawner I'm going to choose a different fine mesh 
turn off debug and connect it to the branch. I'll disconnect the first branch just to see what the second one is doing. Let's go to transform points and try adjusting the scale minimum and the scale maximum to make it a bit bigger and tweak the values again in the filter and noise nodes. My goal here is to minimize repetition and make it seem more natural. I can also tweak the rotation values so it's a bit different from the first branch. I think these values will vary depending on the shapes and the static meshes that you're spawning. And you guessed it again, we're going to duplicate the second branch and make a third one. And disconnect this one and we'll debug transform points. So same idea, I'm going to tweak the values in all the nodes so this branch becomes different from the first two. And in the third static mesh spawner, I'm going to choose one of the longer vine meshes. This one. And we'll disable debug and connect the last node. And we'll disconnect the first two to see what's going on. So I'm going to go to transform points and change the scale to make it a bit bigger. Not too big. Also on the Z axis, let's adjust the rotation to maybe minus 100, minus 85, minus 80, so that these meshes will generally face where the spline is going. Let's connect the other two branches. And you can see if you keep working with the spline, it'll update to procedurally spawn more vines along the spline. Okay, so there's a second method involving splines. Vines on splines. Let's make a new wall over here. And we'll copy this mannequin for scale as well. So let's go to our PCG folder and duplicate our vine spline BP. And let's just call it vine spline 02 and I'll just rename the first one 01 and in our PCG folder let's duplicate PCG vine spline and name it PCG vine spline 02 and I'm going to rename this one to 01 to make it clear and let's slot PCG vine spline 02 into the instance of our vine spline 02 BP and let's open it up I'm going to disconnect all the three static mesh spawners for now. And save, compile, and exit. And let's drag BP Vine Spline 02 onto this new wall. Angle it 90 degrees, and let's make a circle. Yes, this is my definition of a circle. When you reach the end of the circle, Click on the spline component in your blueprint and check closed loop. So let's open our PCG Vine Spline 02 graph. Click on Get Spline Data and we're going to add the number 2 at the end of the actor selection tag. So the tag now is Vine Spline 2. And let's go back to our blueprint, BP Vine Spline 02. In the details panel, search tag, and we're going to change the tag here as well to Vine Spline 2. So it's a new tag that doesn't overlap with the other PCG graph. So in our PCG Vine Spline 02, I'm going to delete all these three spline samplers and get a new spline sampler and change the dimension to on interior. Connect it to get spline data and to the first branch and press D for debug and select the current instance. Now we can see the debug points are inside the loop instead of on the spline. 
Scroll down to the debug scale method, change to absolute and point scale 0, 01. Now we can see where the points are. And I'm going to change the interior sample spacing values to 50 to change how the points are spaced. So before we do anything, I want to apply a feather to the edges. Let's debug on the spline sampler node and scroll down to where this curve is. Double click to open up a separate window. You can right click in the graph and add key to none. And if you move this key, you can see how it affects the density. Try changing the shape of the curve to see what it does to the shape of the fall off. I'll leave it around here for now. And back in our graph, I'm just going to delete all the density noise and filter nodes. And I'm going to get a new density filter and filter out the black low end to begin with. And in the debug scale method, let's change to absolute and point scale 0 0.1. Now let's add density noise to randomize the points that are left in the middle of the loop. Change the debug to the latest one and, and change the scale method. Press I for inspection and select the current instance to see how many points is spawning. Let's get another density filter to get rid of more points and another density noise for good measure and plug this into the transform okay now let's connect everything to the first static mesh spawner in the transform points let's change the rotation in the z-axis 0 to 360 so they're facing in random directions when you move the spline points to change the shape of the spline, you can see the vines also updating with the shape. Now let's duplicate all these nodes and connect it to get spline data. Let's disconnect the first one so we can preview the second branch. And let's tweak some values so that the points are different from the first one. Connect the second branch to the static mesh spawner. And same with the first one, let's change the transform points Z axis 0 to 360 to randomize the facing direction. Duplicate the nodes again. Same story, connect the third one to the get spline data node. And tweak the values. In the static mesh spawner node, I'm going to select the vine that I'm going to use for this third branch and connect the nodes. And for this third branch, when the direction is so random, it doesn't look very natural. So I think I want to keep it more or less facing the same way, minus 20 to 20 or maybe minus 30 to 30. It looks better in my opinion. So let's save and close the graph. So let's try using these two blueprints on this floor. Admittedly, this method is more like a traditional blueprint spline. You're still doing things by hand. In the future though, I wish the splines could somehow stick to this mesh using the normal data or something. That would be nice. Well, maybe you can already do that and I just don't know how, but everybody else knows and I'm embarrassing myself by making this video.
Okay, one last cool method before I sign off. I saved the best for last. So if you're still here, congratulations. So I'm gonna make a new area off to the side and bring in some meshes for vines to hang off of. So you can use any static mesh, but just make sure you have some surfaces that you can hang vines off from the top. So here's my version of the stone hinge, and also I'm just gonna bring in some curved walls and place it randomly. No, God, please, no. And in our PCG folder, right click and make a new PCG graph. I'll name this PCG finds hang. Someone teach me how to name files, please. Drag the PCG finds hang 0.1 volume into the label and change the scale back to default 111. So we'll use this volume to spawn vines onto any actor that it intersects with that has a corresponding tag. So we'll leave the volume here for now and open up the graph. Go right click and search for get actor data and we'll right click again and search for intersect and get intersect with tagged actor geo and connect the two nodes. So in the intersect with tag actor geo node, let's add a new tag called find hang and we'll copy this text. Select this node and press D for debug and let's have a look at the viewport at the same time. And let's also change the debug scale. We can see some points, but it's not really interacting with the actor in the volume. And that's because we haven't tagged these static meshes yet. So let's select all these static mesh actors first. Press shift and left click to select multiple. And in the details panel, search for tag. And under advanced, under actor advance, let's add a new tag and paste the text find hang here. And if you go to, if you select the volume, go to the PCG component, clean up and then generate. You can see the points have been updated to spawn at intersections with the tagged actors. So if I move the volume up here, the points update to the new intersections and a single volume can spawn points on multiple actors at a time. So in our graph, let's search for density noise. And I'm just gonna move the volume over here and make it a bit bigger so I can see what the nodes are doing. So let's switch the debug view to the density noise node and change the debug scale. So basically the same method as before, let's add a density filter. And let's also look at how many points are being spawned. And I'll change the values of the lower and upper bound to play around with the number of points that are being spawned. Now let's right click and add a transform point. And let's also add static mesh spawner. I'm going to connect the nodes and in the static mesh spawner, and just like before, we're going to add a new mesh entry. And I'm going to use this longer vine mesh and put it in the static mesh spawner node. And for some reason, we can't see any vines. But if we go into the mesh, Surprise, you can see the vines are hiding inside the mesh. So let's go to transform points and change the scale and make it a fair bit bigger. So maybe scale minimum two, three, and scale maximum five. And I'm going to bring in our trusty mannequin just to get a sense of the scale and I won't end up making the vines too big. So here are some anti-gravitational vines, if you want them. But I'm going to go to my transform points node and change the rotation. So 180 
and 180 and they will end up hanging downwards uh, on the y-axis let's just make that 178 and 182 so that there is a variation in the angle and it should have been minus 2 and 2 on the x-axis my mistake and on the z-axis 0 and 360 so the z rotation is completely random okay now I'm going to add more vines and so let's duplicate these nodes and the drill is pretty much the same as before I'm going to use a different mesh for this second branch and then tweak the values in the nodes density noise and density filter so that they spawn in different points and I'll tweak the scale and transform points because I'm using a different mesh as well and we'll duplicate the second set of nodes and repeat the same process for a different mesh let's reconnect all the nodes and have a look at what we end up with I'm going to save and close the window so now when you move the volume or we'll copy it to different places where you have tagged actors it should spawn vines according to the intersection of the volume and the tagged actor and it should work across multiple actors with a single volume like this and if you don't like the way a volume is spawning things at the moment you can select it go to the PCG component and under settings you can change the seed number to change how it's looking quickly from the viewport Okay, I've shown you some methods of procedurally spawning vines on meshes to get that overgrown ruins kind of look. This is definitely faster than me painting all these vines with a foliage tool like I normally would have. Obviously, this is still only basic examples of using the PCG tool, but you can start to see the possibilities. I can think of a number of ways how these methods could be better but I just couldn't figure out exactly how to go about doing that with these nodes. I fiddled around with this for the last couple of days, rattling my brain, and realized, why am I even struggling on my own when I have you guys? If you followed some of my past stuff, you would know that I always learn a bunch of things from my viewers and share it back on the channel call me selfish but honestly I think I'm really helping myself when I make these videos you guys have been really generous with sharing really useful tips so thank you really I appreciate every one of you even if you don't subscribe I know the PCG tool is still in development and undergoing change exciting times ahead I reckon Bear in mind, it'll be quite a while until we can use this for actual production. But meanwhile, if you happen to have any suggestions on what I've shown here today, please let me know, it will be very much appreciated. I'll make a follow-up video if there's a killer solution. This tool feels really good in the way that it makes you think about improving your workflow and methods of working. I'm sure you peeps will take this and come up with your own crazy examples and applications. I think the challenge would be mixing the procedural generation with some kind of finer manual control and balancing the two for various needs. If you want to spend a bit more time learning about PCG, I recommend you watch videos from Adrian, who is the developer of the PCG tool at Epic. Also check out Freetime Coder's channel. He's covered a lot of what you can do with the tool with his videos. Thank you so much for watching, 
really excited to see what you guys can do with this.